And we're back for more of the wonderful world of finance and capital budgeting. This topic can be pretty dense, so please be sure that you are reading the text, that you're looking at the slides. I kind of recommend you maybe print out those slides and then read the text with the slides next to them. You can take notes on the slides as you read the text. There are going to be some things in the text that I don't cover on the slides. Those are things that I think are good, interesting, but I'm probably not going to require you to know them for an exam. After you've done that, then look at the videos. See if that refreshes your memory of the things that we've covered. All right. Well, today we're going to do one more. We've talked about the payback period, the discounted payback period, the net present value, the internal rate of return. Now we've got one more thing to look at, and that is the modified internal rate of return. Ooh, why do that? Well, the idea is, that, and the motivation, is that I want to know how much this project is going to cost me today. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the present value of all the cash that's going out. Every time I have to spend money on stuff, I'll take the present value of that. That'll tell me the cost today of doing this project. Now, I hopefully, I'm going to make some money. So there's going to be money coming in, cash inflows. That money that I'm bringing in, I'm going to put back into the business. So the money that goes back in the business will accumulate going forward. It'll grow when it'll grow. I'll invest it. The money I make the first year, I'll invest. And I'll take the money the second year, and I'll invest that again back into the business. And that'll grow into the future. So what I want to do is calculate the future value of all the money I'm bringing in. So then I have a present value of what it costs me and of a future value of what I'm going to get. Well, I can use a formula, right? I can take the, find out what interest rate from the present value will give me the future value. And we call that the modified internal rate of return. Now, do we do a project? Well, if the modified internal rate of return is greater than the hurdle rate, we do the project. Let's take a look at an example. This is the example we've been working before. We have a cash outflow of minus 5,000, and then subsequent cash flows of 2, 1, 3, and 4,000. Now, we need a little bit more information than just doing the internal rate of return. I want to know how much that capital cost me to, uh, to borrow, right? What's the cost of borrowing that money or the cost of the, the money that I'm raising? Here, I'm, and we'll call it the finance rate. I'm going to call that 6% in this example. Also, I want to know that money that I'm making that's coming in, what kind of return can I expect by reinvesting it, by putting it back into the business? And that'll be the reinvestment rate, 7% in this example. So the Excel formula is MIRR, Modified Internal Rate of Return. And you'll see that it asks for a range of values. That'll be just like we did in the Internal Rate of Return. Don't forget, one of those suckers has to be negative. Otherwise, you'll get that pound sign num error. The finance rate is the rate of getting the money. The investment rate is the rate at which we can reinvest. And when we calculate this out, we get 21.24%. How do we decide whether we do the project? Well, if the rate of return here, the modified internal rate of return, is greater than the cost of capital, in this case 12%, so 21% is better than 12%, you do the project. Again, if the modified internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital, you do the project. Professor, I have a question. Who is that? Oh, yes, Moana. You have a question? Yes. Um, 
companies don't have unlimited amounts of money, I mean capital, how do they decide which projects to do? They have lots of projects with positive net present value or NPV or high IRR or internal rate of return, but which projects, how do they decide which projects to do? Very good question, Melana. Anyone have an idea? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anna? I know. Well, I guess they would rant, they could rank them maybe by their net present value. Then they should undertake the projects that have the highest net present value. Those are the projects that are the most valuable to the company. Ah, very good, Anna. Great. Yes, Merida, you have something? Yeah, I, I would also look at the payback period. A project might have a high net present value, but its payback period is many, many years out. That would make it riskier. Ah, uh, excellent points, everybody. So when we look at cost of capital, there are these limitations, right? How do we know what we're going to do? A practical concern, as we heard from Merida, is that you may want to consider both the net present value and the discounted payback period. You'll find often in practice, people propose projects and they're gonna make gobs of money out in the future. But if you can just wait four years, we're gonna make a lot of money. Well, that adds a lot of risk and factors you wanna probably take into deciding which projects you're going to do. Professor, Professor. Yes, Ilsa. I just, when I just heard you say that, I thought about something. I watch Shark Tank, and they talk about that all the time. <laughs> Very good, and I'm glad you watched that show. <laughs>